Hey everybody, I'm Paul Wontorek, and this is the very first episode of Show People, and we're here with a very special show person, Ms. Kristen Chenoweth. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Paul. Thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you for being, asking me to be the first guest. I'm very excited. It's a little intimidating because you are, I, I kind of think of you as like a professional talk show guest now. You are on so many talk shows. You've done them all, haven't you? I believe I might have done them all, even ones we've never heard of, but <laughs> I like it because I'm not hiding behind a role or it's just me and it's fun and I'm really good when I don't plan, you know, when I just am myself um, and I think now Leno and Letterman and Ellen, they've all, they've all trust me to just, if I just open my mouth, usually I can insert foot really easy, but I have a good time while doing it. So is that the trick to being a good talk show guest, just to be yourself? Be yourself and don't plan anything. Don't, I don't like to do pre-interviews. Sometimes they force you and I'll say, these are the things I have to plug or if I'm there for a reason, but no, nothing too specific. But we're completely scripted today. This, this was all worked out. <laughs> we actually had rehearsal at 8 <laughs> o'clock this morning. <laughs> We've done, uh, on Broadway.com this year, we do a lot of polls and you have won a lot of polls. Well, actually, we did, the first poll we did was uh, we asked people what the, their favorite Kristen Chenoweth role was. And I was actually surprised by the, what won, which, I, I, how do you say your role in Candide? Kunaganda. Kunaganda. <laughs> Very good, she, Paul. She, she actually beat Glinda. I mean, that was kind of... <gasps> she did? That, did that surprise you? I that was, was the number Glinda. one. That actually, and April Rhodes. I mean, that was, that was the number one role, April's, apparently. April is just <laughs> great. <laughs> I love that people chose Kunaganda, and here is why. <clears throat> it required me to use every bit of training vocally that I had operatically. Right. And she was funny, and she went on a journey, and Bernstein wrote perhaps one of the greatest arias for any color chair soprano alive, and it's an acting piece. So it, I was able to utilize a lot of my abilities mm -hmm. in that show. In that, it's really an opera, so um, I'm, I'm really glad they chose it. And I'm l really happy people like April. Well, and you also won, let's see, you won a uh, Glee guest star, people most wanted to return. I heard that, and I just, I love that. And you won funniest person on Broadway, and you won person people wanted to spend Thanksgiving dinner with. Okay, We do probably, some ridiculous polls, but. But I like the polls, and probably that one's the one I'm most proud of, because that <laughs> means people like, actually maybe kind of like me as a person, <laughs> which well, is more know, important to me than anything. Sean Hayes, your, your co-star, tweeted, the other day, and he wrote, there are polls on Broadway.com. It appears I'm not only the least funniest person on Broadway, but the least likely to have over Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Is there a little rivalry going on here? Probably. <laughs> He's gonna be sorry he ever messed with the channel. But you know what? <laughs> He's actually probably more fun to have over for Thanksgiving than me, but how do I say it without getting emotional? I love him. And I was supposed to leave the show in September. Right. Not only was I not done with, with Fran, but I wasn't done with Sean. And I put a lot of things off to stay. Certainly, a lot of the naysayers and the haters think it's crazy to renegotiate to play Fran. But I, I wasn't done. And I, I, wouldn't, I would redo it 10,000 times over, and especially with him. He's made it. He's made it a spe very special year for me, and I met a soulmate in a way. Um, he's just one of my best friends. I love him. That's incredible. I mean, has that happened to you a lot through your career, where you get really close with co-stars, or is this a special? This one's special. It's different. You know, you won something else, and this is this is this is exclusive news. What? You were just voted the star of the year on Broadway.com. What? Yeah, we have a star of the year. We nominate eight people, and we ask the fans and. I'm happy to say you won. I won? You are the star of the year, Kristen Chenoweth. Unfortunately, are you there's no trophy. It's just bragging rights. So, you know. I just said I needed something good to happen today. <laughs> you're the star of the year. That means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yes. I'm crying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that I made you cry without asking you anything personal. <laughs> no, that's about as exciting as, I mean, there's nothing personal to find out. I love that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Who, oh my I'm sorry, I, I must be going to start my period or something, but I am so, I'm very, very honored by that because it's the people that are voting, and it's been such a year of lessons and growth for me, in life too, and it just means a lot to me. I thank you very much. <laughs> I'm such a geek.
It's perfect that I'm on Glee. I'm a gleek and a geek and a <laughs> crier. And yeah, I have about the fact that I'm always like, I'm not a crier. And then look, here I am. We made anyway, you cry. thank you very much. That's that's really awesome. Now let's talk a little bit about this year because I was I was just reading your book, A Little Bit Wicked, again, which I love. Thank you. And you talked in there about the, the year of Apple Tree mm -hmm. and how hard you worked on that show and how badly you really wanted to be nominated and it was a nomination. The day of the, day of the nominations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did you like my nomination? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how, how was this year? I mean, this is, a, this is an interesting year. You came back to Broadway uh -huh. with Promises, Promises, a huge hit, one of the biggest hits of your career. I know. Huge. Um, and you didn't get nominated. Which I don't even think anyone remembers you didn't get nominated because you were the star of the Tony Awards. <laughs> it's called making lemon aid out of lemon. <laughs> and it's funny because you always had a reputation of being the person who gets the great review, right? I mean, yes. there were a few shows yes. where like you got the review. Yeah. And what's it, what has this sort of taught you about you know what audiences like, what critics like? I mean, I think it's kind of fascinating. I think there's a turn happening on Broadway, and you know what I mean. I think Big the critics time. are losing their power. So what's all this been like for you? I love this question. I think it's an important one. I think it's a, it, there's a couple topics here that, that yeah. I hope that you, Paul, keep exploring on, in your show and online because the question really is critics versus fans or yeah. butts in the seats as we call them. Yeah. Um, I call them fans and audience members and that's who I... I call oh. it comps versus people who pay $150. <laughs> you that's know. hilarious. <laughs> um, I am not going to lie. The nomination for um, Apple Tree, when you play four different roles, I did get great notices for it. Probably yeah. the best of my career, frankly. I don't know who I made mad, what happened. Maybe they felt I wasn't deserving. Maybe I had gone to Hollywood and come back. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Um, but my mom getting cancer right then and there made me go, eh, eh. Right perspective. This year, um, I mistakenly started to care a little bit again. And here's the thing as artists, and I don't care who you are, you can, you can tell me everything you want, you can lie like a dog, but you care. Yeah. And I am here to admit that I cared, I wanted a good review, and I wanted a Tony nomination for Fran. Because it's extremely close to home, and I went out on a limb, took a risk, and didn't play the funny part. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people didn't understand that. that I feel that's like, what made me love it. I love seeing you, you do something different. Because you've done a lot of things that were in the same vein. This was a complete departure. Thank you, Paul. And that's why I do it. If I keep, I have, I have a very tricky choice here. If what do you do after the apple tree? First of all, right. Do you keep doing the same thing? No. You're an artist. You want to grow. You want to get better. And you want to challenging. Plus, there's some things I wanted to exorcise from my life and I knew the role would help me. I also wanted to sing the score. I wanted to work with Sean. I wanted to do something different. If people had not seen me, if critics had not seen me be com comedic first, I wonder how it would have turned yeah, for me. Yeah, I wonder that too. However, they, I'd say 70% were very kind and 30% were not. And they are paid for their opinion. I respect it. I respected Mr. Brantley's review. That's his job. He's been very good to me in the past. And he said his opinion. He didn't like this. This was a, this was a, a glove that didn't fit for him. Mm -hmm. And I, I respect that. However, I cannot keep doing the same thing or I will get nailed for that too. And going back to something else, what it's taught me is yes, I've been blessed with good reviews in my career, but it taught me to really keep that into perspective. Immediately, I had to get over it and keep playing Fran and remember why I did the part. You didn't do it for Tony. You did it because you wanted to do a historic piece. Some people call it dated. I call it very apropos. There mm -hmm. are women who fall in love with men every day that are not available to them as I have in the past and been hurt. I think New York Times said, this would never happen to her. Hmm. And I just giggled because I thought I've allowed <laughs> it. Happened. I've, I've allowed it a couple times. What I love is that it's such a sexy role. I mean, and actually, April, too, is a very sexy role. I feel like <laughs> you you're. Really? Think yeah, I think so. I think, I think you're, you're going in this sort of different direction. I love when you're, you know, your dramatic pill scene in Act Two. 
you. When you're slip. I mean, it's like Marilyn Monroe. I mean, do you Thank feel you. Do, you, do you feel sexy? Is it? Yeah, I do, and and I think to our costume designers, I, I used to have a poster above my bed. It was a little mouse and a tutu. We don't. Let's not even analyze that. But the the thing said, beauty is as beauty does. And my mom always said, if you feel pretty, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Mm. Just feel pretty. And I told the costume designer, I said, Bruce, just make me feel pretty, and I will be. I will feel it. I will feel sexy, and he did. He that slip is constructed to an inch of its life, but it's it's hot. And I don't mean I'm hot. I'm saying that thing helps me with the character. So you're finishing up a very long run. Yeah. And um, what what are you doing for vacation? I'm so excited. You know, I haven't gone on vacation in three years. Wow. Mm. And even then, it was like a three day thing, and my ex boyfriend took me. So I'm gonna go away to a very hot place. <laughs> That's one plane right away, and I can't wait. A and tropical, I, tropical paradise. Yeah, yeah, where no, where like it's just private, and my cellulite can just hang out, and it's all it's just me and my cellulite and my friends. <laughs> That's one thing I'm dying to know about you. You have this whole LA life now. What is what is your life like in LA? I go to the coffee bean every day. I read. My life is a little bit more relaxed. I also have my weekends, so if I'm shooting. I shoot all week, crazy hours, and then, um, and then I just uh, either sing on the way. I, I, you know, I'm doing concerts a lot, so it's just a little bit different. It's pacing. It's about pacing there for me. Here, it's like hmm, when I wake up, huh, ah, ah, how do I feel? Ah, ah. Okay, right. okay, don't do over too much. There, I can sort of, I don't know, I slow down a little bit inside. What Does about, that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. What about L.A. men versus Broadway men? You've dated both, mm. and I know in your book you. Uh, I love I love Chinorkin. That's actually <laughs> you, do, you documented Chinorkin, Chinorkin very well in the book. <laughs> I love I love him. So I still do. I always will. What, what, so what is it like dating there versus here? Are you, are you, you dating know, anyone? I'm a serial. No, not anymore. I'm single um, for a couple months now. I'm a serial monogamist through therapy <laughs> and Zoloft. I've learned that about myself. <laughs> so I know that um, one thing I need to do is actually date. I've never really. Date? Honestly, I've had like boyfriend, right. boyfriend, boyfriend. Right. And I get so involved fast because I'm a romantic mm -hmm. and I want so badly to be, to find that mate now. When I was in my 20s, I was like, eh. My 30s, I don't know where they went. But um, <laughs> now that I'm 42, I feel ready to have that partner. But I just want them to have my back. I don't, I, I don't really care what they look like. I want them to be funny and like me and be kind to others and have my back. That's all. Because I'm so loyal and I would make a great partner for that kind of person. So um, I'm looking for that East Coast, West Coast. I don't know. Um, here, I don't, I, it's been a very interesting year as far as I had a boyfriend and it didn't work out and you know, it's just, it's, I try in the business, out of the business. I don't really know. Now I'm just keep trying to keep open. And I'm not also like, so I'm, I'm not drooling about that. And I thought for a while I needed to hurry up and have a baby. And now I'm just kind of like, let go, let God. The meant to be, it'll, it'll it be. Comes. Yeah. There's plenty of girls, women, Bernadette, Patty, Betty, Buckley. I asked Betty, I said, why is it so hard? And she goes, it's hard for us divas. <laughs> and I thought, you're right, it's hard. I wouldn't call myself a diva, but she's like, I just loved it. I love her. So, so okay, you have a, an Emmy and you have a Tony. So, are you working towards what's it called? The EGOT or the what's it called in 30 Rock? Ego, E G O T? What is it? I mean, oh, the Emmy, Emmy, Grammy, <gasps> Oscar, Tony. Oh so, God. here's what I'm thinking. I feel like if you do a straight, pure out Christian album, you can get a Grammy pretty easily. Uh, I did that, the second record, and it backfired. Yeah, but we can push, yeah, but post Glee, I think we can do another one. We can, that, that's an easy category. So, we just got to figure out the Oscar. Well, then, okay, well. Okay, I need and want and I probably will play Dolly Parton, so. Is that really going to happen? I mean, she'd like it too and I'd like it too, so. That'd be awesome. She's got to write it. That'd be awesome. I think, honestly, that's a part that I was kind of born to play, to be honest, Dolly. I feel like you need, like, your precious. You need something a little dark, 
maybe I was thinking I was thinking maybe you know those those pageant moms on um, tiaras and toddlers and tiaras. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I feel I feel like we can do a dramatic like a dark indie movie where you're like one of those moms with a little girl. Wouldn't that be good? I love toddlers and tiaras, and I love. Do you watch it? I love it. How I'm about obsessed. the little girl that that calls her um, her passy her nini, which is what I call my blackberry. I need my nini. <laughs> Now I call my Blackberry, I say to my dresser, I need my nanny. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Anyway, I love toddlers and tiaras. And from where I'm from, it's not evil or weird. People do it because we're bored. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. So can you give me any, a little bit of glee fun? I mean, you're going, you're going to shoot, April Rhodes is back. Oh, yeah. I don't know if, if the all-white production of The Way has happened. I mean, how inappropriate is she? Yet... You somehow accept her. I don't know. Um, Stripping. You said you're going to strip. I, I didn't. Ryan did. I'm oh, like, Ryan really, did. Ryan? How far back the camera going to be? Um, I'm, I was supposed to come back in the fall, but I yeah. I stayed in Promises. So um, I'm going to do two in the spring, it looks like. And I don't know what he's got planned. He, he, he's so smart. The, I think his brain must really hurt because there's a lot of noodles in there. I'm so proud of this show. I knew it was going to either be a big bomb or a big hit. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad it went that way. And you guys are working on a, a show, right? Yeah. He's developing a show for you. Mm-hmm. I don't... That's amazing. I can't believe he's doing that. I'm, I'm like, are you, sh you, are you talking to me? Are you sure? <laughs> um, but yeah, it should be really good. It's a kind of a man and a woman, variety show, married, I don't know. I heard it might be Sean Hayes. She takes a sip of her of her mug. Um, I wish. But what's you know what's amazing? It's amazing that all this Broadway talent now that people want to see singing and shows. It's amazing that you guys get to use your skills well, in Hollywood. They're it's, starving because they watch no, people who are famous for no reason. Right. You know who you are. You know you have the the housewives, which I'm, I'm guilty of watching all of it. But people are starving for real talent. talent. So Glee is fulfilling that desire. Amazing. Yeah, I'm really proud to be a, any part of it at all. So, uh, do you think we'll see you back on Broadway in the next couple of years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they'll have me, um, I definitely think. Well, the audiences I'm... will definitely have you. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so. Star of the year. I mean, I, I'm so happy by that. I just. Does that mean I get a? a, a can I have my name in a star in the four? I'm gonna have to come up with a trophy now. I mean, a, like a walk of fame. Why like don't a, you have it like going up your stairs? Oh my God, that'd be awesome. You don't. I can even give you my placard from my dressing room. You just tape it on one of the stairs. You, you don't even have come to go up to with any ideas expense. That I didn't even think of. Because I'm desperate to have an award this year. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But I, I will definitely be back to Broadway, and there's some things brewing that are quite exciting for right. Broadway and for me and I hate to say his name but it's it, it, it could be really special and also yet another different kind of part so there's a there's a name that you can't say I can't say but I, I definitely want to I'm definitely want to do on the 20th century and um, I'm just I want to work with Sean again I'll always look for reasons and and shows to come back to Broadway and in the olden days, they would have written a show, but that's kind of, I mean, are you going to cast me in In the Heights? Probably not. <laughs> Am I going to go do rent? Probably not. Right. Uh, Fila? I'm out. So, you know, somebody write something, please. So you're actually taking a few days off, uh, and, and you're, gonna, you're doing some concerts on New Year's Eve in L.A. Tell me about that. Yeah, because I'm not busy enough. <laughs> I'm going to go... Um, two, the, two in one night, right? You're doing yes, two I'm doing Walt Disney Hall concert. I have two concerts in one night, 7 and 10.30. Um, their tickets are selling really well. There's still some available, but um, so I encourage people on that side of the coast to come and ring in the new year with me. It's going to be quite an eclectic um, program. Uh, some stuff that people will want from me, and then some stuff people have not heard at all. So new music. Things people don't want. <laughs> yeah, so, stuff you want, stuff you don't want. That's the name of the. That's the name of my next album. Stuff you don't want. Buy it. The one that's gonna win you a Grammy. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so uh, there's some new music and it's stuff from my new record that I'm working on, and some new Diane Warren music and. I've also hired four backup singers from Promises Promises, the, the four girls from the cage that oh, sing. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I've brought them in because they have basically perfect pitch and perfect blend. So, and they're not bad to look at. Um, 
I have to keep them on the other side of the stage, though, because I need the focus to, <laughs> to stay here. Kidding. What a relief it is to know what I'm doing on New Year's Eve. Like, I don't have to stress out or sweat or feel like a loser because I'm single. Or, you know, I know what I'm doing. I've got my plans. That's and awesome. anybody who's like that and you don't have plans, come see my show because we'll all not have plans together. And it'll be really fun. Well, thank you so much, Kristen, for coming. Thank you for asking me to be your first guest. Hope you'll come back sometime. We can talk about a lot more. Always. Always. And um, I just want to say again that the, the Star of the Year thing, I, I, I'm really honored. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And thank you for giving me a great sort of ending to 2010. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.